Hey guys, John from FlyAtMikeAlpha.com and today we're talking about the four forces of flight, how these gigantic machines get off the ground. So how does an airplane actually get into the air and what forces are acting upon it when it's flying through the air? So there's four fundamental forces. We'll focus on each one. So we see this gigantic Boeing 747 lift off the ground. There's four fundamental things that are acting on it. The same as the four forces that are acting upon our little Piper Cherokee here as it rolls down the runway and takes off. We'll get right to it. So let's define the four forces that are always acting upon an airplane, whether it's taking off, flying through the air, or coming in for a landing. The four forces are thrust, which comes from the engines, the propeller or the jet engine, drag that tries to slow the airplane down and fights against those engines, the lift, keeping the airplane in the air, what's holding it up, the wings, and the weight, weight of the airplane. Notice we don't say gravity, but we say weight of the airplane acting in the opposite direction, fighting against that lift, trying to pull the airplane down towards the ground. Now it's important to note that these forces don't ever bend or change the angle that they're pulling in. Thrust will always directly oppose drag, and lift will always directly oppose weight. So regardless of the bank or the pitch of the aircraft, you're always going to have lift directly opposing weight and thrust directly opposing drag. Now let's take a look at these forces as they act upon the airplane as we're flying along straight and level here, say at 100 miles an hour, and we have our four forces all in equilibrium. The airplane's level at 1,000 feet and 100 miles an hour, and then we accelerate the airplane, say to 150 miles per hour, and as we speed it up, as we accelerate it, then we must have more thrust than drag as it accelerates. Now once we get to, say, 150 miles per hour and we're stable again at cruising along at 150, then we're back to the four forces being in equilibrium. Lift equals weight, and thrust is equaling drag. We're stable at 150 miles per hour in 1,000 feet. Now let's go ahead and look at the four forces when we're climbing or descending. And so here's the tricky part. If we take our airplane and we want to start climbing, say we're at 1,000 feet, we're going to go ahead and go up to 2,000 feet. Then we need to accelerate upward, generate more lift than weight, and the airplane starts accelerating upward. Now once we get to say 500 feet per minute up, weight and lift will then equal again and we'll continue to climb upward. So we are climbing, getting higher, but we're not accelerating upward. So the four forces are always equal when you're in unaccelerated flight, unaccelerated. So if you're stable at 100 miles per hour and 500 feet a minute going up, then the four forces are equal. Lift equals weight, thrust equals drag. If you're decelerating, accelerating, or if you go ahead and stop climbing from say 500 feet per minute and level off, then momentarily your lift will be less than weight so that you can decelerate your upward motion and level off at say 2,000 feet here. And then you resume level unaccelerated flight and the four forces go back to being equal. So as we look at our Piper Cherokee here, rolling down the runway, as we accelerate down the runway, we have more thrust than drag. The airplane's increasing its speed, and we don't quite have enough lift to get off the ground, so we have less lift than weight until eventually we have enough airspeed to generate enough lift. We get more lift than weight, and the aircraft leaves the ground, starts climbing upward. And then eventually, once we're established in climbing flight, the four forces are equal. We're stable at 85 miles per hour, and we're climbing at, say, 500 feet per minute, and everything's stable. The four forces are equal as we're climbing upward. Now, even as we approach to land here, the four forces are actually equal. We're descending at 500 feet per minute. Our airspeed's stable at 80 miles per hour. And as we come down and get closer to the ground, we'll start to ease back on the controls. That increases our lift on the wings, decelerating us as we come down to the ground to try to level off close to the ground. It also increases drag, which makes the airspeed slow, so that we touch down right about 60 miles per hour in as close to a zero rate feet per minute descent as possible. And as we roll out here, drag is greater than thrust because of the power is at idle and we're applying brakes, and the aircraft slows down. It generates less and less lift and settles down onto the wheels and stays nice and stable on the ground. What you ultimately need to remember here is that there's four forces that act upon every airplane flying through the air. Lift, weight, 
thrust and drag, and those four forces are often equal unless the airplane is accelerating, either up, down, or forwards or backwards. If it's an unaccelerated flight, all four forces are equal, even if it's climbing or descending. Hope you found this helpful. Be sure to check out some of our other YouTube videos down here below. Check out our Patreon page, how we fund all these videos, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can keep up with all our latest episodes. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below, and we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. Remember, if you can't fly every day, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. We'll see you all next time.